Okay, today's lesson is going to be over isotopes and ions. And so we're going to start by picking up with yesterday's lesson a little bit, just to kind of review, and then talk a little bit about what these isotopes and ions are. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is take a look at hydrogen. And hydrogen, if you remember, has one atomic number, and the atomic mass is 1.008. So today we're going to find out why most of these atoms in the periodic table have a decimal number behind the whole number on the majority of all these. So we're going to find out why that is, okay? So with isotopes, what that means is that we have differences in the different types of atoms that are out there. So for example, if I have a period at the end of a sentence, let's say that was a normal sized period if you were looking at a book, that period would have over a million atoms in it. Okay, so that's one million. Well, if you remember, the atomic mass of hydrogen was 1.008. Okay, what this trailing number tells me is that there are different types of hydrogen out there. They're not very common, but they're still there. So let's think about that for just a second. If we have a million atoms that make up the period of a sentence, then the majority of them will be a normal hydrogen atom. However, 1% maybe would be less than that. So that's, that's still a significant number because if we take 1% of a million, that's still 10,000 atoms. So 10,000 of those atoms that make up that period would be different types of hydrogen that aren't very common. But because they are still out there, we still have to account for that. That would be like for example, if you had uh, been making grades all year long, let's say you made hundreds on every assignment all year long. Oops, sorry. But if you made hundreds all year long to the end of the year, but for some reason you just didn't turn in one paper and you have a zero. When you calculate your average, it's not going to be an even 100, is it? It would be if you made hundreds all year long because the average of hundreds added together divided by themselves would equal 100. But now that you have one zero in there out of maybe 50 grades or 80 grades that you've done this year, well, the problem with that is that 100 will now be like 99.876. It will still round to 100, but it's no longer an even 100, is it? And so what this tells me is that somewhere along the way, you did not make 100 on some assignment. Had you made 100 all year long, you would have made 100 average at the end of the year. But because you made that one zero right here, you were sick or whatever happened, you didn't turn in a paper, then what that tells me at the end of the year is that you still deserve a high grade. There's no doubt about it. The math isn't going to lie. But what the math does tell me is there was somewhere that you were not as successful. You didn't make a perfect grade on some assignment along the way. Okay? So that's kind of what's going on here with these hydrogen atoms and a lot of the other atoms in the periodic table. In fact, most of them, they have these uncommon type atoms that are associated with them that act the very same, but there is one difference to them, okay? And some of them have more than one type. So we're going to look at hydrogen for just a second. So let me kind of draw the box out of uh, our periodic table. And so if you remember, we had some things that these numbers told us. Okay, this number right here, remember, told me that we had one proton. And remember, protons are positive. Well, if you remember, all the atoms in the periodic table are considered to be neutral because they need to cancel each other's charges out. So we also have to have one negative item to balance that positive proton. That one negative thing would be one electron, which is negative. Okay. Then this atomic mass, remember the mass of the atom is what's in the nucleus. When we weigh an atom, it's just the nucleus. The electrons do not matter in their mass because the electrons uh, are, so insignificant, or are so insignificant to the overall size of the atom. They're so small. And so this particular number tells me the total number of protons and neutrons. So it's the mass of the nucleus, which is the mass of the atom. So what we had to do with this number, because it's 1.008, was we had to round it. And because it's 0 0.0, if it's anything 0.4 or lower, then we're going to round it to just 1. If it was 0.5 or higher, we would round it to 2. So we're going to round this number to 1. We're going to subtract the proton we know we have, and that's going to end up giving us 0 neutrons. 
So basically, if we could make the atom appear to us, let's pretend like this black puffball represents a proton, and let's pretend like this represents the electron, okay? We're going to pretend like the white one represents a neutron, but remember this atom doesn't have any neutrons. So hydrogen just looks like this, and really the electron would go around kind of in a waveform around the outside of the nucleus, okay? So this is the simplest atom, that's why it's also the lightest atom, because it has so little mass, so it rises above everything else. So hydrogen is the lightest atom in the periodic table, so that also means it's the lightest atom in the universe. Now hydrogen is the majority of most stars, in fact our sun is just a whole lot of hydrogen. And because of its density and its gravity, it presses those hydrogens together and forms helium. But that's for a different topic, okay? So, let's see what happens. Because remember, this has a point zero zero eight. So what, tells me, what that tells me is there's more than just these one proton atoms running around there. There's some atoms out there that actually must have a neutron or maybe two neutrons in them that help to average out that point zero zero eight. They're uncommon, but they are out there and we must include them in what the overall average masses are of all the hydrogen atoms combined. And so let's take a look at what happens there. Well basically, we already talked about the first atom and it's called hydrogen, so I'm going to go ahead and write it down. And it had one proton, one uh, electron, and zero neutrons. And so it looks like this. So just a proton, and one electron. Okay, the blue is going to represent our electron. Now we have another type of hydrogen that's called deuterium. D E U T E R I U M. Now deuterium, on the other hand, has one proton. So we're going to get one proton right here. It has one electron because it has to balance that positive charge. Remember, that's positive and that's negative. So we have to get an electron also. And then it also has one neutron. And so we add a neutron now to this atom. Now what's different about it? Well, Remember we don't calculate the electrons as mass, so we're going to get rid of those for a minute. And just look at the two atoms side by side. These, two, uh, these protons are the same size as that, as that neutron right there. And so this atom weighs half the weight of this atom. So this atom basically weighs twice as much, okay? So it's not quite as light. If we were to get them both contained within two separate balloons, this one would be uh, float higher than this one, or it would float faster up than this one because it's twice as heavy, okay? So the neutrons add to the mass because they're the same size as the proton, okay? But other than that, the atoms are pretty identical. They act the same, they react the same, they want to combine up with the same way with other atoms. So, but we call that one deuterium. It's not very common, but we still have to include it in its overall average mass, okay? So this mass, the mass up here was 1 AMU, which means atomic mass unit. This one is 2 AMU, atomic mass unit, okay? Now there's a third type of, of hydrogen, which is called tritium. Okay, tritium, one proton, positive, one electron, negative, two neutrons. Okay, so it looks like this. So we still have the one proton, we still have the one electron, and we now have two neutrons. Okay, so th these are in the nucleus right here. The electrons are on the outside of the nucleus, okay? So we're going to ignore that electron and we're going to pull it over. So look at the, two, uh, the three different atoms now. We had hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. This one right here now has three items in the nucleus, so it is three AMU. The overall charge of the atoms is still zero because these blue and blacks cancel each other out, okay, as far as charges go. So those two would cancel the charge, those two would cancel the charge, those two would cancel the charge. So their charges are the same, but their masses are different. This one weighs three times as much as this one. This one weighs two times as much as this one. This is the lighter of the three, okay? Now, if you notice, if we were to look at our periodic table, go back to it for a second, if we were to scan this chart and we'd say, well, if that had an atomic mass of two, the second one, we come over here, well, helium has an atomic mass of four. So it's still lighter than helium. So let's think about the third atom of hydrogen, the tritium. It had an atomic mass of three. 
that's still lighter than 4. Helium starts us off with 4 because it's got 4 items in the nucleus, right? And so all those forms of hydrogen are still considered hydrogen, but the two that are uncommon are called isotopes. Isotopes. So what makes an isotope different? It's the neutrons. They're uncommon forms of that element, but they still exist. And so you can notice sometimes, like at, uh, let's see, let's find one. Like, let's look at boron. Boron must have an isotope because it's 10.81. It may have more than one isotope. I'm not real sure about boron. But what I do know is that the number is 0.8. So that tells me that there are isotopes that are actually more common with boron than they are with hydrogen. Because look at hydrogen, it's 0 .008. So that decimal being with the zeros in front with low numbers, it tells me their isotopes are not very frequent. But with boron, because it goes 0.8, we'd actually round that number if we were starting to figure out neutrons instead of 10.8, we'd round it to 11, which tells me that there are more common forms of the isotope boron than of hydrogen. So hopefully that makes sense a little bit. Now, you've probably heard of carbon-13 and carbon-14. Well, take a look at carbon. Carbon is 12.011. Uh, okay, so it's carbon. If we look at carbon, carbon has an atomic number of 6, an atomic mass of 12.011. But we've heard of carbon-12. We've heard of carbon-13. Okay, so we've heard of carbon-14. Okay. Car carbon-12 is the most common. And so what's that tell me? Well, 12 minus 6, so because we round this, 12 minus 6 tells me the more common form of carbon has 6 neutrons. Well, if we have a carbon-13, if we had a carbon-13 minus 6, that would have an atom with 7 neutrons. If we had a carbon-14, we subtract the 6, that tells me there's also carbons with 8 neutrons. But the more common one is this one, carbon-12, because it's got the whole number in front. So when you hear about carbon-14, carbon-13, carbon-12, you know, sometimes we use those uh, elements of carbon to determine the age of fossils and, and prehistoric uh, artifacts that we find to find out how much carbon is left in those elements or in, in those particular findings. And we know that every living thing has carbon in it. So by how the carbon has degraded or, or fallen apart or denatured will tell us uh, how old that fossil is or those remaining forms of life might be. Or if we look at layers of sediment where those fossils were found, we can determine how much carbon is left in those areas of, of other living things to get an idea of the age of the artifact. Okay, So what you'll notice, hopefully get an idea and understanding of these isotopes, is almost every atom has an isotope associated with it. Okay. The only time you get into some atoms that really don't have isotopes are some of these last ones, and that's because they were formed in a lab. That means that scientists actually made those atoms. They don't exist in nature, and because they don't exist in nature and because they have to be created in a lab, they may only last one one-hundredth of a second before they fall apart. But what that tells us is there's only one type. It only has one atomic mass because the only time you may ever find it is if somebody makes it. So you're not going to see varieties of it in nature anywhere. Okay? But when you get into these other ones, where they have a 0 0.2, 0 0.59, 0 0.39, most of these atoms in the periodic table are going to have isotopes. And remember, isotopes are simply the same type of atom with a different number of neutrons. Now, sometimes those neutrons might be less than the more common atoms. So instead of like uh, hydrogen and uh, deuterium and tritium uh, increasing in neutrons for the isotopes, Maybe the uh, more common one has more neutrons, and the less common ones have fewer neutrons. So it, it really is relevant upon uh, which, which atom is the most common in nature, okay, of that particular, of that particular uh, atom, okay? Okay, let's talk about ions for just a second. And I'll try to make this kind of quick, okay? Ions. Now let's try to take a, take a look at some things we know a lot about. Okay, uh, let's see. We're going to look at sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is table salt. Now, we're only going to be interested in the atoms or the electrons that are in the outside orbital. Now, we have a really easy way to figure that out. 